This is Twit. All right, let's go ahead and do this again. We've got uh, we've got my. Uh, if you go over to HDMI two, Kara, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start up a new. There we go. So this is tapped. So right now, uh, if you actually care, if you go to the overhead, this computer is attached to this, this tab, which is going to a router that goes nowhere. So this doesn't mm -hmm. actually have internet access because I also don't want this sending probes on the internet. Mm -hmm. that, that's just mean. Yeah, that's, that's a bad thing. But uh, this is another one of the things, uh, like a bit of my protocols. Uh, whenever I'm running anything that's network aware, I have the infected color and the clean color. So infected <laughs> here is purple. Uh -huh. I, the infected never goes into a machine that's not supposed to be deliberately infected. Okay. Um, whereas this, this is just a tap line. So this goes to, this does go to a Windows 7 box. But you're just reading what's passing. You're Correct. not sending anything. This yet. is not actually connecting. You cannot communicate to the orange wire through the purple wires. That's smart. Yeah, so that's, that's how this is going to work. So I'm tapping it. Now, care if you go back to HDMI 2, this is what it's reading right now. So this is pretty typical for a Windows 7 box. Mm -hmm. I've got a bunch of, uh, of DNS queries for Microsoft.com. It's, it's actually trying to, uh, to talk to the update server. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a couple of ARPs, and uh, that's address resolution protocol. So it's just saying, OK, hey, I'm new here. What's, what's on the network? Mm -hmm. uh, but not a whole lot. It's actually kind of quiet. Uh, this is this is all just pretty typical traffic. In fact, let me go ahead and switch this so that it doesn't auto scroll, because uh, I want it to stay with the most. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, now we got to do the thing, Brian. Actually, here, <laughs> why don't you do the thing? You want me to click the button? Yeah. So uh, go back to the other computer, Kara. I'll do the honors, the breaking champagne over yeah. it. Yeah. And so I mean. Actually, uh, open up the sample data so we can see, make sure that those are still, uh, there we go. And actually, let's go ahead and open up a, um, a, mm -hmm. hold on, a task manager window so you can see the process as it first starts up. There we go. Oh, hey, stop that. And so, I mean, no one in their right mind would have downloaded this to nope. their desktop you really and, then, and then activated that, that'd be bad. it. Okay, Imagine I went to a website. And so now we can see how much CPU time it's going to take up and how quickly those files get encrypted. So the process has started to, to, oh, so it's like four seconds and the files have encrypted. However, it's still going to be a couple of seconds. You're going to get a minute here before it deletes the unencrypted files. Because it, is it still probably probing? Like it's probing. For... It's going through everything. So it's anything that's attached, anything that it can reach over the network, anything mm -hmm. that might be hooked in over a USB port, it's going to encrypt. And once it has them all cataloged, it's going to start destroying all the unencrypted files. Is it sending any traffic through the tap now? Well, yeah, let's take a look. So go ahead and go back to the other computer. It's now become crazy busy. So if this was the first variant, one of the DNS entries that I would see here would be sending it to the kill site. But you'll notice there's a lot of traffic that's been, that's been picking up. One of the, the, the most obvious ones is LLMNR. So let me, let me uh, separate that out, LLMNR. What this is doing, this is the local link multicast name resolution protocol. This allows the computer to find out what else is on the network. Oof. So this, all it's doing right now is it keeps reaching out into the, to the network saying, hey, who's here? Hey, Anyone I'm here? new in the neighborhood. Are you vulnerable? Oh, let me come over. <laughs> now, if there was another machine, what you would start to see is you would start to see a lot of TCP port 445 traffic. That's Back and Samba. Forth. Right. That's, and what that is, is once it knows the other machines on the network, it will start probing. It'll say, hey, right. are you vulnerable to this? Are you vulnerable to this? Which on your inside your house network, that port would be typically open, right? Inside. inside. Yeah, inside. If it's open outside, then... then well, you're that's, getting hosed. Yeah, yeah. you're getting hosed. That's, that's a really, really bad thing. But so this is, this is actually one of the signs that I now have my network program to look for. LLMNR isn't used that often. So if suddenly I have a computer that is just spewing those, those packets, it just keeps asking who's here, who's here, who's here, yeah. it's probably malicious. And so my network, my switch, it has policy on it. It will automatically disconnect that port. It will put it on its own VLAN. Oh, okay. So it still thinks it's connected, but it can't touch it. It'll warn me. It'll say, hey, I'm noticing suspicious traffic. Do you want to allow this to, allow allow this to go not. through? Okay. Right. Um, what is it? Somebody in the chat room just asked a good question. What, what happens? Oh, uh, it was Ed. What happens if you, you get infected, it's encrypted all your files, and then you make like a new file? Does it encrypt that yep. after? <laughs> Any, yep. so after the fact? Anything I plug into this computer now, 
We'll get encrypted. We'll get encrypted. Ah! Because it's running. That's <laughs> always going to be running. Oh, boy. It's, it's now a process that's running in the background. And even when I kill it, uh, remember, the double pulsar backdoor is still there. Yeah. Oh, man. So if you plugged in an external drive into this after it it's would, been infected, it would encrypt, it would encrypt that. But it wouldn't then, you wouldn't then be able to take that drive and plug it into another computer. It wouldn't then activate the, the uh, exploit. No. It would just uh, be that drive encrypted. Right. It would, so it'd be, all the data on that drive would be encrypted, but the exploit is actually not carried in a USB connected device. And, uh, now, if, <laughs> if for some reason it was this drive, which actually does have the file on it, <laughs> and I had uh, like an old XP machine that did auto run, <laughs> okay. Yeah, then it would. It yeah, would. then it would. But that's such a confluence of really, really bad things. Yeah, uh, I, I don't oh, see there that. we go. Oh, so it's officially there. We go. Oops. So now it has it's switched over, and I'm, I'm I should get my little. There we go. And the timer. Has now, started. okay, go ahead and come back. Come back. Notice uh, to the other computer. Mm -hmm. See all this? Yeah. So now that it's it's firmly entrenched, these are the those TCP packets that are reaching out looking for the kill switch. Okay. Which other versions or more modified versions don't do now. Right, right. right. But all the, the so let's, uh, port 45, 445 is actually in use now. Look at all this traffic that this machine is generating. There's nothing else on this network. It's just <laughs> this infected Windows 7 box. And what it's trying to do is it's trying to propagate. And you'll also know, notice there are some links here. There are some addresses that yeah. don't exist in the network. They're outside. So this is actively trying to get out into the internet <laughs> to try to infect machines out there. Jeez. Um, wow. So what happens if you... So it says Bitcoin. When you what happens yeah. when you click that? That just takes you to a Bitcoin uh, well, site? Well, it's, if you go back to uh, HDMI 2, uh, or HDMI 1, I'm sorry. Because I mean, there's no way, I guess, that's kind of the nice thing about the Bitcoin is the anim anonymity. Yeah. But well, like <laughs> finding out where the Bitcoins are going this to actually, or who you're paying. This does have instructions. So if you want to pay, they, they, they give you instructions on how to get there. Because they want to make it as easy as possible for you to do this. By the way, look, here's the language lo loadout. Right. So they, they really wanted this to be an inclusive uh, package. Is there any, has anyone reported like how much money they've probably made from probably this? Probably about 70,000 so far. Yeah. Which, for something this of this scale, is nothing. And again, yeah. it really isn't elegant. No. Uh, it works. It's very effective because it's using something that the NSA developed. But, I, I mean, it's, it's basically just crypto ransomware that they've tacked a worm onto. Right. Yeah. Piggybacking. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we see what's happening. And oh, I, let me see. I love this. Uh, if, if you could, can you put this in a in the small screen, the little uh, the little wire shark? What? The, the so HDMI one. Put it in a in a in a two box. I, I want to see it keep running because it's it's a it's so much fun. Oh, the other input. It's so much fun to see what this is trying to do because if you watch it long enough, uh, you'll see yeah. it it keeps hammering this network. In fact, if I I, I brought two laptops with me, mm -hmm. one of them is a completely vulnerable Vista machine. And I haven't done this test yet, and I don't want to do it live, but I want to plug it into this network. And see it propagate to the machine. See how fast it gets over, because I know that's vulnerable to, to SMB. Yeah. Um, I also have a Windows 10 laptop that I know isn't. But this acts differently once it knows there's other devices on the network. Once it knows that there's at least one other device, this, that traffic screen just goes crazy, because it just starts throwing traffic against, right. uh, against the other device.